Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another tutorial using the Affinity Photo. For this one, we're going to be using the brand new version 2. It came out less than a week ago, and they have a couple new features, especially in the mask section, that I want to go over, specifically the hue mask. So to start off, I'm going to go into the stock tab. I'm going to type in dress, and scroll down. I found this photo earlier that I liked, and we're going to be using this one. You can find it yourself if you have the program. They have a 30-day free trial, so download it, try it out, follow along with me if you'd like. I'm going to close it out, and we're going to go back to our layers section. Now, right away, I like this photo, but I don't like the red right here, and the rule's a third. She's a little bit off. I'm going to take the crop tool, go back to original ratio, and just throw her on that middle, that first third, and get rid of that big red spot out of the picture. Makes me happy to work on a photo that, compositionally, I like. So we're going to take this layer, we're going to right click, and we're going to duplicate it. So we're going to come down to the mask layer, click it, and you can see we have a few more options than what we had coming from version 1. We have a regular mask, we have an empty mask. Get rid of the layer underneath, we'll show you an empty mask, it's already gone. Now you can grab your paintbrush and paint on whatever you want. It's already masked all the way out. We have a compound mask, luminosity range mask, hue range mask, and a band pass mask. For this tutorial, I want to go over the hue range mask. So we're going to click that and we're going to add a hue range to our top layer. Now for this photo, I really want to select that purple dress right here. This is going to be a unique tool if you're doing any product photography, anything that you want to change the color consistently on. This is going to be a phenomenal tool to select that individual color. So the hue range, you can already drag the hue range around and you can see how much it's going to affect the photo, what's selected, what is not selected. You can grab in the middle of the two parts. You can roll these back up. So you can grab each individual node and move it. Grab in between the two and spread it out. Grab in the middle and change the entire one. And then you got the back two and then the back node. And the middle ones will just help with the range of the color you have selected. You have a picker tool right here. So I'm going to hit the picker, and I'm going to select that purple on the dress. And already, just going over that hue range, you can see how fine that selection is. Yes, we can clean it up, but right off the bat, it does a pretty good job selecting a good range of that purple. We can hit preview, and it's going to change it to a black and white image. And we can fine tune, by moving these nodes a little bit, how much we want. The colors that it's selecting. We can also go into the input and the output here. And what this will do, it'll make a finer edge detail, a finer line between those colors during that gradient until it gets to that purple. Input doesn't really change it too much, but the output is huge for this one. So we can grab the middle here, and we can see how much we can add and take away. Going back, we'll turn off preview, and it did a pretty good job already. And this is non-destructive, so if you do want to go back in and change it later, you can now just click it, and we can change our selection again. Fine tune it in the future if we need to. Now I do want to clean up this image a little bit more. So on top of the hue range mask, I'm going to add just another mask. Make sure that it's underneath the layer we have selected. Sometimes version 2 I've noticed it put the it can put the mask on top. So just drag it in. Now we can go to our paintbrush tool. I'm going to bump the hardness up a little bit here. And we're going to change the color to black. And now we can start painting out the extra selection in the photo that we don't want. Get a little bit close to her. Bump up the hardness a little bit more, 70%. And you can see this purple is reflecting off her dress onto the tree. I don't need to clean it up too much because it's not going to be that obvious. But just enough to make it a cleaner, cleaner image. So there, we can toggle the visibility of our background layer back on and it doesn't look like we did a whole lot. Now with that top layer selected, with our mask and our hue range mask, we can add an HSL adjustment. Make sure that it's underneath the top layer, and from here, we can just hue shift, and we can see that we're changing her dress. We already have a good selection, nothing else in the photo is changing. We can change the saturation, desaturate a little bit, really change the hue. We can change the brightness of that selection. 
So this is going to be really great if you do have any product photography that you want to take that single photo and then just show that same product in a different color. The Hue Ranger mask off. You can see how much it's, it has unselected on top of the mask that we have here. I know this is a quick tutorial, but I just wanted to get it out there. When Affinity first announced it with version 2, I was interested in the Hue Range mask. I really wanted to see how powerful it was, how fine of a selection it was, how accurate it was in creating a mask with certain hues. It's not perfect. It's not going to do the job like what we did here before, turning off the mask that we made. You can see in the tree, it's going to change a little bit. Because even if you go with like the selection tool, you still need to refine it. You still need to tell Affinity and clean it up a little bit more than what it does automatically. But it really does do a good job. I'm a little impressed with how well the Hue Range mask worked. If we really zoom in, you can see a little of that pink up top where it didn't really select it too well around the collar, a little bit on the back right here. I mean, unless you're, you're pixel peeping. And then we even have some right here. I don't know where this purple is coming from, but we can still go with that mask layer and clean that up. Now it's not no longer an issue. But even the fine detail right here in this little strip, it did a really good job if we have the mask layer we can see the original and how much has changed. And for a quick tutorial, for a quick new tool, it did a good job. There's still some purple showing through a little bit, but unless you're really pixel peeping, getting in close, this really does do a pretty fine job where I'm impressed with it. And I think it's a great addition to version two of Affinity Photo. I know this tutorial is quick. I hope you enjoyed it. Learned a little bit more about one of the new features in Affinity Photo version two. I should have more of these coming along, but this is one of the newest additions that Affinity Photo version 2 had that I really wanted to share with you and test out myself. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like this tutorial or any of my other ones. Comment, do you think you're going to use this tool a lot? Do you think it's useful? Do you think it's something that you're not going to use? Is there something better that we can do with it? I know skin tones are a big thing. We can actually change the skin tone. But this was just a quick rundown about how the tool works, how accurate it is and what it can do for you and your workflow. Thank you for watching. Everyone have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the future.